tucked away in Northern California lies a true bucket list hike. A trail that hugs a 25 mile stretch of coastline in the King Range wilderness, filled with incredible ocean vistas, wildlife, and constant reminders of the power of the ocean. I'm Robbie, these are my cousins Brian and Andrew, and this is our childhood friend Thomas and his dog Sierra. After road tripping across the country, it was time for the capstone of this adventure, the Lost Coast. Okay, this is Brian and Andrew right now. This is their flight. It will be here in 49 minutes. So we'll head out to get the car in a second. It's gonna be super weird. It felt strange that we are finally meeting up with Brian and Andrew after road tripping without them for nearly two weeks. Yo, 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 yo. Yeah, was the flight? flight. It was good. Cool, cool. Well, I mean, it was a flight. <laughs> Robbie and I have been together nonstop for the last three weeks. Thomas is the only person I know right now. <laughs> Seeing you guys actually exist. This is wrong. We're not some like big persona you made to, to sh talk with online. How's everybody feeling? I feel great. <laughs> My mind has not degraded as much yet. <laughs> yeah, pretty good. Getting up early is gonna suck. But... Thomas has completely lost it at this point. <laughs> Sierra is like, she's like, why, why are we still in another hotel? Okay, well I'm getting in bed. All right. Good luck to everyone else. <laughs> Let's do this. <laughs> It is 6.13 in the morning, we got up at 5.30. We have a four and a half hour drive. And the weather looks clear. I think we're good to go. You guys ready? Yep. yep. Let's do it. We now headed out in two cars to make the drive from Oakland, California to Shelter Cove. We made it out of the city and into wine country. The sun cast a golden glow over the landscape as it continued to rise. <laughs> as we drove, the morning mist hung above the hills. Thomas and Andrew fell behind, so we stopped to get gas just as Brian was waking up from a nap. So far the drive has been amazing. Have you experienced <laughs> any of it? I have actually. I was surprised to see the redwood trees. I don't think we'll be hiking among them at all, but. We are less than an hour away from the trailhead. So we will wait here for a few minutes at least and see if they pass by. Yeah, there's no way they could have passed us. We would have seen them by now. We took in the smell of fresh air, and while we waited for the others to show up, we talked about some important pre-hiking notes. How's your bathroom situation? <laughs> it's uh, normal. Yeah. <laughs> Systems functioning as normal. <laughs> and then we saw the others pull into the gas station. <laughs> How's the drive? I would say we're 45 minutes away. From shelter? Yeah. We'll follow you this time. Okay, they're gonna follow us. We were now on our way again, driving on a road that cut through a massive redwood forest. Eventually, we could see the ocean as we made our way down a steep, winding road. Finally, we saw Black Sands Beach as we made it to the end of the trail where we would leave one car for the end of our hike. After driving all day, we were finally able to stretch our legs and take in the incredible view. Wow! 
<laughs> this came out of nowhere. <laughs> <laughs> then, we discussed who should drive the other car back to the start of the trail, and who should watch Sierra. Someone's got to be in the back with Sierra. I'd rather drive than take care of the dog. Okay. Yeah, thank you. Plus, I'd rather have you drive. <laughs> As we drove, we passed by stunning scenery, but the road was incredibly windy and bumpy, and the drive was nearly two hours long. How's your dog doing? She's ready to go hiking, I think. I think uh, she's like the rest of us, just trying to keep it all in. <laughs> Eventually, the road smoothed out a bit. We passed through some incredibly scenic hills and meadows before finally arriving at the Matoll Trailhead. It was great to be back out of the car, and we weren't the only ones happy about it. Oh man, it's like so good to be out here. Like, I feel like this is the first time I've exhaled in like four hours. All things considered, we made it out here incredibly smoothly. Yeah. Like yeah. no hiccups whatsoever. Look how happy that dog is. <laughs> A dopey looking creature. <laughs> in the fresh open air, we stretched our legs out before the hike. We approached the trail and reviewed our plans. Our hike was fairly straightforward. We were hiking from here to the Black Sands Trailhead to the south, camping three nights along the way but it was complicated by the fact that there are several zones that are impassable during certain times of the day due to the high ocean tides. We would have to go through these impassable zones when the tide was three feet or less. And being out here really feels like you're on an alien planet. And the plants are also super unfamiliar, but there's a few I recognize. Uh, there's some really bright, shiny yellow flowers growing, and those are California poppies. You can kind of see how they resemble a poppy flower. And there's also these shrubs all around this tall grass that have these pea pods. Again, I don't know exactly what the species is, but even without the pea pods, you can kind of tell from the leaves that it's in that pea family. And generally, plants in that family are edible or at least non-toxic. So even in a different environment, you can learn certain things about the plants around you. One thing that I love about places like this is that it reminds you that the world is more interesting than you think it is. <laughs> <laughs> Spending a lot of time, you know, just in whatever suburb or city, like the world's boring. Like, no, just where you are is boring. <laughs> The trail led us up a sandy hill. From the top of the hill, we could see the vibrant blue ocean stretching across the horizon. We decided to hike out towards the beach and check out the coast. No matter which direction we looked, we were met with absolutely stunning scenery. This is, without a doubt, one of the most incredible things I've ever seen in my life. This is magnificent. It was here, on the edge of the Pacific Ocean, that our journey truly began. For the next three nights, these oceanfront sands would be our home. We started walking down the beach, finding plenty of interesting things lying around in the sand. So this is called bull kelp, it's a type of seaweed, and I honestly don't know why it looks this disgusting, but I think this is actually edible. And I honestly know very little about seaweed, but I've always suspected this was called bull kelp because it looks like a bull whip. But if we uh, cut it open, let's see what it looks like. It has this like distinctive bulbous part, and I'm curious. Oh, yeah. So it's almost like a funnel. It actually, I mean, it kind of just smells like seaweed from the restaurant, but let me cut this open. Yeah, it's just hollow all the way down. <laughs> See you later. <laughs> we were all thrilled to be hiking out here, especially the dog. I think Sierra is just taking it all in. As we continued along the beach, we saw a huge tree stump jutting out from the sand. 
This is really weird. Yeah, was there a tree here or did this stuff get put here? What if it's like literally the biggest piece of driftwood? It's kind of got swept out of the set here. Maybe. So you're kind of used to seeing all this like bleach driftwood on the beach, but I found something that is not driftwood. It's a bone of some sort. Whoa. I feel like it's not like a bird or something you'd think you would find on a beach. Yeah, something bigger. Yeah. As we hiked along the beach, we saw an unexpected sight, a dune buggy. And we could see why it might be helpful on this type of terrain. It's funny when you're walking on sand, you kind of have to look for the best places to walk. Like wet sand is definitely going to be more firm than dry sand. Some rocky bits are usually going to be firmer, and then if there's vegetation, you're usually in luck. You're always looking for these ideal spots to step. I imagine by the end of this trip, we're going to be pretty tired of walking on sand. Yeah. <laughs> right now it's a nice change of pace, at least. As we walked, we stared out at the powerful ocean waves crashing against smooth, weathered boulders. We watched as grass billowed atop verdant hills just inland from us swaying in the pungent ocean wind. Seagulls soared on the coast around us. We continued taking in the sights and shared our thoughts on the journey so far. I think I'm still in shock after the car ride. Like my body is just like, well, wait, what's going on here? <laughs> Usually when you drive a long distance somewhere, you see that gradual change of terrain, but the ocean is still just so like shockingly different from anything we saw driving in. Yeah, you get a time zone change and like just a really <laughs> bizarre change in scenery, you know? How are you feeling, Thomas? I'm great. I'm a little nervous for her just because I'm always nervous wherever I take my dog, but I just can't believe, all right, it's like, you're on the beach, that's the trail. So this is a very surreal landscape. Yeah. We've been to places like this, but the enormity of the ocean is not to be reckoned with. It, we've said it so many times, but it really is like so, so surreal out of this world. And in the sand, we found some shells. I don't know what exact species of mollusks these belong to, but something really cool about shells like these is the tinge of purple at the edge. And sometimes you see clam shells that have a really brilliant purple. And I know that some indigenous people make jewelry from that part of the shell because it's just this like brilliant purple you don't really see anywhere else in nature and it's on this hard substance that you can already like carve into jewelry but some of them are like even more purple than the other shells this one even has some of that kind of pearlescent sheen to it Tira, let's go As we continued along the beach, Brian found yet another interesting ocean artifact. So I found this shell on the beach and I wanna say it belongs to like a sea urchin maybe? It's got this really cool algae green color and this really awesome pattern on its shell. It's a really cool find. That is freaking cool. This one has the purple spine still. Wow, oh, that's crazy. Dead, I take it. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> there's nothing here. Yeah. Look at, look at Sierra trying to find out what it is. <laughs> it's, Got a really brilliant color. Yeah, it's like your favorite color. Yeah. We quickly realized that these were not an uncommon sight on this beach. A little further ahead, we passed by a trickling freshwater stream. That's good. So as near as we can tell, one kind of nice thing about this trail is that there's plenty of watering spots. So we don't need to carry a ton of water. We can lighten our weight a little bit. In fact, my backpack feels super light. Is well, yours is probably pretty heavy. It's really heavy. <laughs> He's got a dog to take care of, but. Me, Brian, and Andrew, our packs are all pretty light for this trip. For once. We continued hiking and found all sorts of natural materials strewn across the beach, including this rock with barnacles attached to it. We also saw a strange looking dried up thing. I think this is like a bony piece of a fish. Do you have any idea what this is? Oh, you know what? That's, look, that's the same piece in here. Oh, weird. This might be some sort of like abalone or something. Oh. Like it kind of looks like a piece of muscle here, right? And then... As it turns out, 
These were remnants of a creature called a giant Pacific Titan. Along with that, we also saw some more wildlife flying around us. Yeah, these seagulls just flew up over the hill, had something in its beak and dropped it. Look it over to see what's going on. There's a ton of them. Yeah. This is where we're gonna see some tide pools. When the tide comes up, it fills all these rocks with water and creatures and whatnot, and when the tide rescinds, all the creatures are left in those little pools. We ended up not finding much in the tide pools, but we saw these limpet shells, this spiral-shaped shell, and this husk of a tiny crab. We continued hiking on the windy beach, verdant hills to our left and a bright blue ocean to our right. And at our feet were lavender-colored shells and sea urchins strewn across the rippled sand. Although we're all experienced hikers, walking on the beach made us feel like kids on their first family vacation. It's like someone opened up the aquarium and you can go in all the exhibits for as long as you want with your dog. Because I was just walking over there, I'm like, ooh, there's a sand dollar, there are sea urchins, look at all these like mollusks and everything. Crab shell right there, I think. Oh yeah. The environment that I'm the least accustomed to is probably these ocean environments. Seeing mountains and stuff is not that weird for some reason, but this big expanse of salty water, that is very unusual for where I'm from. The more we hiked, the more interesting things we saw washed up on the shore, including this deer carcass. Whoa. That is a deer! Although the beach was scattered with the remains of different sea creatures and other detritus, it was also teeming with life. Above us, seagulls soared on the clear blue sky. Flowers and shrubs flourished atop the verdant hillsides to the east. And in the ocean, we caught our first glimpse of a seal floating between the waves. We continued hiking, nearing an important point on the trail. That point up there is our first impassable zone. And we are currently in a receding tide. We've picked the perfect timing. So if we get there in an hour, we have just enough time to get across that point without going the overland route. Before continuing on, we decided to take a quick break atop a large, sun-bleached log. All the other groups so far have passed without a problem. We've seen them all go by, so we're going to book it a little bit, make sure we get across there, and then we can take our time the rest of the day. Just off the trail, there was an old driftwood fence and some flowering ice plants, a non-native succulent with edible fruits and leaves. We also saw the start of the overland trail, which can be used when the tide is too high for this first impassable zone. But of course, we opted to continue hiking on the beautiful beach. In the sky, we saw a pair of pelicans soaring above the grassy slopes. And we saw a harbor seal resting in the sand waiting for the tide to carry it back out to sea. The hills were covered in colorful flowers watered by freshwater streams and the dark rock beneath sometimes had small caves carved out of it. Cool. Yeah. We continued on, nearing the impassable point just as a strong ocean gust picked up. Some strong wind here! Yeah. This is the impassable point. So now that we're beyond this, we're good for the rest of the day. Wow. It's very, very windy. <laughs> that was windy. <laughs> yes. Still a 
little windy. The sun now shimmered off the turbulent ocean waves. In the distance, we saw a cormorant perched on a large rock. All right, we got a nice little overland route now. I cannot tell you how good it feels to walk on solid ground. That sand is fun, but it's very difficult to hike in. Wanting to avoid ticks and tall grass, I continued on the sand while the others hiked on the overland trail. The wind rushed through the grass as we hiked. From this vantage point, we saw the landscape in a new light, with the vibrant green grass complementing the deep ocean blue. It was such an indescribably beautiful landscape that it left us speechless. might have a new contender for one of my favorite places I've ever been. Yeah, this is uh, pretty unbelievable. <laughs> this is giving me the same sort of feelings that I've had before when you go to amazing places for the first time and you're like, I didn't know this existed. Yeah. yeah. This is amazing. To the left, there's an entirely different landscape than to the right. Yeah. And they're both amazing. And in the grass, we saw a bright red flower. You should ask me if I know what that plant is. <laughs> Because I have a feeling that it's Indian paintbrush. It is, it is. <laughs> this was like one of the first wild edibles I think we learned about from Survivor Man. And I remember uh, hiking out in the Tetons and seeing it for the first time. It was so exciting. Have we ever tried it? I think maybe once or twice. It kind of tastes like paper. <laughs> so instead of dry nothing, it's dry paper. Yeah. <laughs> All right, looks like we took a different route then. Thomas and Brian. Man, solid ground feels so good. Oh, that, that's why I came up here. I yeah. was like, oh, dude, this feels great. When I see those two trudging in the sand, I just keep hearing that tattooing music where they're walking in the sand dunes and it's like, doo, 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 doo. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so up ahead, is that the lighthouse? Yeah, I think so. If I remember from my research correctly, there's actually a bunch of old houses and stuff. Before this became public land, uh, some of the people were just holdouts and they decided to keep their land. So there's some private property up ahead. As we hiked forward, we saw more of the distant lighthouse. And when we rounded the corner, we saw one of the houses that was still standing along the coast, along with a shack retrofitted with solar panels. We passed by some seagulls and saw some huge weathered tree stumps. Then we crossed over another freshwater stream. Glad there wasn't strong wind when I crossed. <laughs> After that, we headed back inland onto solid ground. Unfortunately, that also meant dealing with ticks, which eagerly latched onto Sierra. Just from a short jaunt in the grass, I ended up pulling off over a dozen ticks from Sierra. It was time for a change of plans. As nice as the firm ground was up there, we're staying on the beach now because we don't want to pull off like 80 more ticks from <laughs> Sierra. I just don't understand. Like we are at the edge of the land, okay? Any farther and they would have to swim. And yet they still followed us all the way out here. <laughs> <laughs> what if like, the wind was so powerful that they were like flying at you from the ground. <laughs> Back on the beach, we saw more interesting shells. Look sir, droids. You can see the inside of the mouth of the sea urchin from here. Whoa. It's crazy, each of these teeth or whatever is so intricate. And it kind of looks like a flower or something. <laughs> <laughs> this is one of my favorite points in the trip where you get far enough in that there's no turning back and there's no choice in the matter anymore. Yeah. If yeah. you're just, you're out there, nobody's coming to get you, you got to get out on your own. <laughs> Especially on a trip this long, you really get that sense. Yeah. 
We continued hiking, and just ahead, Brian and Thomas spotted something exciting. Among the rocks were several seals soaking up the sun. Along with the many plump, fuzzy seals, we saw this big pearlescent abalone shell. We can now see Punta Gorda Lighthouse, which as it turns out, was under active construction. Thomas also spotted something else in the distance. Those aren't rocks up ahead. Oh my goodness, I didn't even see them. Yeah. Lying near a large rusted cylinder were several large seals. We also noticed the beach was covered in sea urchin husks as we moved in for a closer look at the seals. I'm surprised by how big they are. Those are big guys. Yeah. I was trying to think, are these elephant seals? I mean, they are massive. I, I don't know, but I think elephant seals are, have almost something that resembles a small trunk. I thought I saw one of them that had that. If you look, I think there's like a mixture of the regular seals and then the larger elephant seals, like the darker ones are elephant seals. I guess so, maybe. It's so hard to tell. And those over there are massive. They literally just look like blobs. <laughs> yeah, they're very difficult to see in the environment. They just look like rocks. We also saw a seal with letters and numbers dyed into its fur, presumably for research, though it was hard to tell from a distance. It looks like one of them has like letters carved into its skin or something. It's so weird that they like to nap a lot of times it feels like humans are unique in so many ways, but we're really not. <laughs> I think if we had the option, we would do, be doing exactly that. <laughs> so, just a guess, but that looks like a burnt down portion of the lighthouse over there that's just rust, been rusted over. So maybe that used to belong to the original lighthouse, and maybe it's just kind of over time been blown there. I could be just totally wrong, too. They're definitely doing something, man. We also noticed some of the seals were shedding flaps of fur. Along the sand, there were pieces of seal fur scattered about. I bet you they probably come up here too to lay about in the sun and when they're just moving around, the fur just gets rubbed off because there's just a lot of little bits and pieces here. But no signs of blood or anything like that. As it turns out, these seals were molting, a regular process where their old fur is replaced with new silver fur. I might be excessive, but I really don't want my dog to get ticks, and I really don't want to pick ticks off my dog. <laughs> Up ahead, we came across a large freshwater creek. This right here is the first of three creeks. There'll be one more up ahead, and then at the third one, it's Sea Lion Gulch. That's hopefully where we're going to be camping, but there's a fair number of people out here, so hopefully they've left us a campsite or two. You guys getting tired? If anything, it's like mentally exhausting to hike in the sand. Yeah. There's an old shit propeller here. Whoa! Zeiss, Patton, Fulton, and... And there were even more oddities to be found ahead. I've seen a bunch of tiny sea urchins, but look how huge this one is by comparison. What I'm wondering is if this is an entirely different species, or is it just one that got really big? That's kind of crazy. The trail now wound back onto the grassy hills. It stretched on for a while, so we didn't have much of a choice but to walk with it and deal with the ticks as we went. Thankfully, Sierra had a treatment to protect her from the ticks. This is the second of the three streams. The third one's going to have our campsite. From our current vantage point, we could see distant rocks covered in something white. Some seals were lounging on top of them. As the sun started setting, it cast the sea in a warm, sparkling glow. Strewn on the rocks below was some old, rusty machinery. Finally, as we crested the next hill, we were close to the day's end. We are just about to the campsite. We can see it up ahead. There's a little butte. Yeah, and, and then we can also see the impassable zone that we'll have to do tomorrow when the tide has receded. It's already too late now to do that part. Hopefully, we have at least one nice campsite that we can use, and that not all the good spots are already taken. 
So occasionally as we're hiking, I feel like I smell this kind of sweet fragrance. And down here, there's these mint plants, and if you rub the leaves, there's this kind of like floral fragrant smell. I don't know exactly what species it is, but it's uh, got all the telltale characteristics of like a mint plant. What are these yellow guys? So these are something in the aster family. I don't know exactly what, but it's the same family as like sunflowers and daisies and things like that. There's like so much color growing in here. And actually down here, there's a plant called yarrow. It's got these distinctive white flowers and these really lacy looking leaves. And there's varieties of this plant where you can dry up the leaves and use them as a medicine that will coagulate blood if you have like a open cut. Also on this rock, there's all these little succulent plants just growing out of the cracks. It's like so the same kind that you could uh, grow in a pot. And I think you could pull the little nubs off of those and propagate them into another plant. As we approached our campsite, we saw seagulls flying above. We were surrounded by the most vibrant colors, which added to the dreamlike scenery that surrounded us. Before long, we had reached our destination. Well, we reached the butte where the campsites are. Looks like Brian and Thomas are already up there. <laughs> Yeah, I guess there must be a ton of campsites because there was a lot of people and I don't see most of them now. So probably everybody else is on more prime real estate. We ascended a hill before heading through a wooden area, then ascending another ridge where we saw Thomas waiting for us. From up here, we peered out into the vast ocean around us. So, Brian's out looking for a better campsite, but the girls down there said uh, there really wasn't a better one available. So I'm holding this one while Brian goes and sees if that's true or not. He's already back. Wave at Brian and see what he does. Uh, that that looked like a no. <laughs> Basically, it is like full up there. There's some like empty spaces in some of the campsites that have already been taken. That uh, wouldn't be any better than this, and it's crowded. Are they nice campsites? <laughs> <laughs> like maybe same? one of them was a nice one, but that already got claimed. So uh, yeah, this looks, this is fine. I mean, we can make yeah. it with this. We've done do with we've done do. Yeah. <laughs> we don't did worse. The only thing is we have three tents. So it's like a bit of a hassle. But. I can uh, volunteer for the tick bath over there. <laughs> <laughs> Not being fully satisfied with our current campsite, Brian backtracked a bit to see if there was anything that we had missed. All right, so we just came from there, and Brian has confirmed that that is a better campsite than where we're at now. I'm going to head over. Yo, yo, yo. This is definitely better. Oh yeah, good find. You can fit two tents right here and then one here. Perfect. Having found this better campsite, we called the others over. We now set up camp, then got ready to eat our food. Uh, I got the beef pasta marinara from Bruce P. Oh. Got the pad thai. Got the butternut doll. Okay. Yeah, this one's from Ron Mueller. <laughs> this is from Xing Chan. <laughs> Thank you all so much. Thank you. This actually is super helpful. Looking forward to this. That one Robbie's got is a new one, right? Oh, wow. Mm. Hey, dog. <laughs> when you guys were kids, did you go to the ocean? Yeah, mm -hmm. sometimes. Once in a while. Actually, yeah. South Carolina, I feel like, was where we went usually. Mm -hmm. What about you? No. I went to the ocean once when I was in fifth grade, and then I didn't go again until I was like in my 20s. Mm. It's funny how the ocean is like a sought-out resort-type vacation destination but it can also be such a harsh environment. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Tell you one thing though, you cannot beat that view. It's true. I just can't believe how many seals we're seeing. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. I thought that would be like, if we're lucky, we might see one. Yeah. That's why we freaked out at the first one we saw. Man, I bet you if you're a seal, 
or a sea lion, you got so much fat, you can sleep anywhere and it's still comfortable. <laughs> <laughs> well, I got my lasagna right here. Last time that was our highest rated meal. Mm -hmm. Let's see, I'm a, I might be a little premature in eating this. <laughs> premature or it's good? <laughs> Both. <laughs> After eating, we watched the golden sun set behind the swirling ocean. In a remote part of the world like this, we are left with little else besides the raw wilderness and our own thoughts. Humans are social by nature, and we are inexorably connected to everything around us, like the flowers and plants with the pollinators, or all the life teeming in and around the vast ocean. Everything depends on everything else. At the same time, we as humans are individuals with our own bodies, our own identities, and our own lives. When we lose sight of that, we can attach ourselves to others and start using other people or things as a crutch in life. All sorts of twists and turns can happen in life. If we want to be truly free, sometimes we have to let go of our desire to control things, to let go of the things we want to attach to the most. Sometimes, we have to turn inward and focus on loving ourselves. When we do that, we can be better prepared to face whatever comes in life, and even to help others get through their own twists and turns. The wilderness is a good place to introspect, to reflect on what it fundamentally means to be human, to be alive, to learn how to better love ourselves and to love others. As the sun set, we eagerly got ready to fall asleep. I feel like this is the moment we've been waiting for since we woke up this morning. <laughs> <laughs> this will be the moment we wait for every day at this point on. Oh man, why do, I feel like this is an exhaustion I've never felt. Like I'm not tired tired, but there's something else about it. I am tired tired. <laughs> I'm every tired that I've ever tired. <laughs> How is uh, Sierra and you, Thomas? We're doing all right. Sierra's asleep, and uh, I'm uh, enjoying my wicked fast 5G. You got 5G? No. Oh. <laughs> uh, I'm going directly to sleep. I will see you all in the all morning. Right. Someone farted already. <laughs> was that you? That was no. Wait, you didn't fart? No. Thomas's fart is so powerful it wafted to our tent. <laughs> All right, good night. All right, good night. Good night. It's 5.30 in the morning. Birds are up. Sun is up. Tide is down. We gotta get up and start moving. Waking up kinda sucks. Mm -hmm. At the break of dawn, we swiftly packed up all our gear and broke camp. While we tore down our tents, we shared how our nights went. Was it just me or did it feel like you guys got no sleep whatsoever? Yeah. <laughs> it was over in an instant. In an instant, man. <laughs> that, we yeah. went to bed at 9 o'clock, got up at 5.30. That's a solid eight and a half hours. And I, I don't feel a little bit rested. <laughs> <laughs> it was a quiet and windy morning as we broke camp and watered the dog. Before getting the day started, we took a moment to enjoy the peaceful vista in front of us. Then, Andrew and I crossed over to the other ridge and headed over to grab our bear canisters. Now, it was time to sort through all of our food for today, pulling out what we were planning on eating and packing the rest of our snacks and meals away. After that, it was time to hike out. From our campsite, the trail led us over another ridge, then took us along more campsites. From there, we reached another wooded gully, 
The trail declines steeply, leading us over some rocks and into a stream. Now, we left the lush hills and returned again to the beach. All right, I think this is what most of the impassable zone is going to look like. Lots of wet rocks. I feel like this could be worse than sand. <laughs> wow. The rocks were definitely tough to hike on, though there was the occasional reprieve. Oh, here you go. Nice little trail back here. But eventually, the trail faded and the rocks seemed to stretch on for miles. But although the rocks created an uneven terrain, they at least provided solid and stable footing as we hiked. It's funny how much we hated hiking on those rocks in Savage Gulf, but how much better this is than hiking on sand. <laughs> although it's hard to say which is slower, sand or this. We now pass through some large boulders where Andrew saw something interesting. On this rock are a bunch of shells and these are limpets. These are the conical shells we saw the other day and they're really just glued to the rock but sometimes people will harvest these to eat them. I mean they'll probably get bigger ones but you'd have to really slam them off the rock to get them to let go because they're just suctioned on there so strongly. Along with shells, we also saw flocks of cormorants roosting on a distant boulder. And above us, a daylight moon loomed, pulling back the tide as it sank lower to the horizon. Everything about these black sand beaches was absolutely unreal, and it was made all the more uncanny by the early dawn atmosphere. That is hat rock. And apparently it's always impassable no matter the tide level. So there's an overland route that we gotta take and it looks like some other people are already doing it. It doesn't look too bad. Just a little bit of uphill. We scrambled past more weathered rocks. Past these boulders, the trail started winding up. The trail took us further up the hillside. Exposed, jagged rocks that had escaped the ocean's waves added even more character to the grassy landscape. Agave plants glowing in the soil were silhouetted against the backdrop of the ocean. We enjoyed the view from this nice, solid dirt path. This is a nice reprieve. This is beautiful. Some sort of uh, dilapidated structure up ahead. Maybe it was an old house or something. I'm sure this was a very beautiful place to live, but this had to be so impractical. The trail now led us through another wooded ravine. Then it emerged back onto a grassy ridge where we could see the ocean and the rocky coastline below. Okay, in five minutes, the tide is going to be at its lowest point today. Looks like we're about to go back down to the beach, I think, right? Before heading back to the beach, we stopped and rested at a small campsite along the trail. Here, Robbie pointed out an interesting mushroom that I almost overlooked. It looks like there's a huge puffball here. I'm not exactly sure what species, and it looks like it's kind of already starting to get past its prime. Oh. On the inside, it's turned all brown, and that's where all the spores release from. If you find a puffball like this and it's completely white inside, it's going to be an edible species. It's like as big as my hand. <laughs> yeah, I thought it was a rock at first. <laughs> this was Calvadia buniana, or the western giant puffball. Now back on the beach, we saw some raccoon prints in the sand, and the exposed layers of rock created an interesting pattern during this portion of the hike. 
Thin layers of lighter colored rocks contrasted with darker stone, creating a striped pattern. We couldn't say it enough, but this landscape really made it feel like we were in a completely different plane of existence. I can't tell if this looks like heaven or purgatory, because I just don't see the end. Just like the coast keeps going and going until the fog takes it away. Yeah. So if you love to hike on rocks, it's your heaven. I'm not sure what terrain I dislike more, sand or rocks. <laughs> <laughs> this is basically the walking equivalent of the drive we did yesterday. Oh, it's so mentally taxing to find kinda, every rock that you gotta step on. I kinda love it, but... You would. Away with you. Away with Take your dog with you. Lying on the ground, we saw a fish head. Yeah. And just ahead were dark, smooth stones covered in green algae. And we saw more interesting layers of exposed rock nearby. It's interesting, because as the waves have kind of worn away at this cliffside over time, you can start to see how like the, the earth and the rocks and the stratus have bent over time because of tectonic plating. So this almost looks like a full on arch here. And up here, you can see how it's pushed the rocks up this way over time and how the water and the waves have kind of carved away from that. After a brief rest, we continued on. We could see the sunlight just starting to break out from behind the hills all around us. We were now approaching Kuski Creek where the sun created an ethereal glow. I think we have the answer to your heaven or purgatory question, Thomas. Seriously. Golden light poured out from the valley in front of us. As magical as hiking at dawn had been, it was great to see the bright, early morning sunshine. Not a huge fan of getting up early, but wow, there are definitely some perks. This is like, uh, I don't know what it's like, but it's amazing. <laughs> Here, there was a pool of fresh water. We paused to take a quick break and enjoy the scenery. After chatting with some other hikers, we continued on. The round stones, black sand, exposed bedrock, and distant verdant hills almost made it feel like we were in Iceland rather than in Northern California. The sun had now risen high enough to cast more of the beach in sunlight. It was an arduous trudge through sand and stone, but the scenery was absolutely breathtaking. Once again rounded a corner in the coastline. Past the bend, we saw a vista full of sunlight and mist. The way that the mist and the hills just like fade into the mist and the sunlight, so awesome. It really does feel like we're on some journey to the afterlife. <laughs> <laughs> it doubly has that feel because there's other people on the trail. It's kind of like you're making the journey yeah. with them. This is like our second chance for the Kalalau Trail. Yeah. Yeah, it's amazing to see such a weird landscape right in California. <laughs> we continued on, making our way towards the hazy horizon. All the rocks and rubble and tide pools made it feel almost like we were at an exhibit. It's like if you've gone to an aquarium and they've built parts of the aquarium to look like the ocean, this is what it looks like. We took a moment to sit and rest near a small waterfall. Though the trail had been flat, hiking across all the sand and rock was physically and mentally exhausting. Then we continued on. 
Okay, we are less than a mile away from the end of this impassable zone. The tide has definitely started to rise. Just looking at it, we can basically see the end and we've got plenty of room to hike, so we're sitting pretty pretty. We enjoyed the incredible scenery around us. And when we weren't looking at that, we were finding strange things on the beach. We saw some old rusty machinery, part of what looked like an octopus tentacle, and these. These are some weird looking alien creatures. These are actually barnacles, specifically a gooseneck barnacle. And if you look on the underside, you can see how they have this fleshy neck and then this like hard, bony, shelly part that's got all these scales on it. These are growing on a piece of bull kelp. And actually people will harvest these and boil them and eat them just like any other shellfish. The sun was now high up in the sky, illuminating the foliage and water below. The terrain was also changing, and it seemed like we were getting some reprieve in our hike. There's like legitimate trail here now, it's really nice. Oh yeah, fairly positive that corner is the end of our... Far one? Yep. Hopefully the rest of it is like this. The solid trail felt great on our feet, and creeping among the rocks we saw a lizard. We saw more trickling waterfalls running down the striated rocky bluffs as we hiked. Eventually, we came to another outcropping in the coastline. Earlier I thought this was the end of the tide zone. There's still slightly more to go. When we get out of here, I am legitimately contemplating taking a quick nap. Yeah, I think it's just a little past this rock. I do wonder, are we hiking up on that ridge? And up ahead, we saw some more interesting things. There's also a canoe up here or something. Yeah, it's like a whole raft. If this wasn't the ocean, I would totally be down for testing that out. <laughs> I wonder if this is a kayak that got lost at sea. It's just funny how perfectly it is there. Yeah. I think what's interesting is how, because of the waves, it just eats at the base of it. You think that's just bird poop that stained it? <laughs> uh, actually, Probably salt, honestly. Oh, salt, yep. Yeah, that might be it. Although I bet the top probably has a lot of bird poop. Yeah. I bet some seals have rested on here at some point. This would be a nice place to sunbathe. Getting closer. The ocean is just constantly in motion. It's so weird that it never rests. You know, if you were getting late in the day on this hike and that tide was coming up, that would be quite alarming. Yeah. We were all feeling a bit drained, but then we came across another bend in the trail. Woo. Finally, we had reached the end of the second impassable zone. Cool freshwater streams trickled through the sand and the yellow-green valley glowed in the sunlight. Other hikers were resting about. We found a large log to sit against and eagerly joined the others in resting. While we rested, we chatted about our time so far. I feel great as long as I don't have to get up from this position. <laughs> I'm feeling so good right now. Sitting on the ground like this is the way to go. Oh, Ooh, my hair creates a natural pillow. Oh, yeah. Oh, I wish I brought a hat. <laughs> Can't believe I forgot a hat. Can but. confirm, hat is nice. See you all on the other side. <laughs> <laughs> the reason I specifically angled myself this way. <laughs> Who's got sunscreen? Thomas does. Thomas, yeah. Can I get your sunscreen? Yeah, after I'm done. Oh, you sunscreen? Yep. Good for you. <laughs> <laughs> this is what those sea lions must have felt like. <laughs> they probably are really tired swimming in that ocean. <laughs> well, also like having to scoot on the land <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> so inefficiently. <laughs> Why don't I have legs? They're probably like, man, I really want to go sit on the beach. <laughs> it's going to be a lot of effort. <laughs> now, we continued on. The trail led up onto the grassy hill. We saw a beautiful farewell to spring flower and an Oregon gum plant, which secretes a thick white foam from the budding flowers. And ahead, there was something else that Thomas spotted. Stop! It's a rattlesnake. Okay. If you come up here, it's in the grass. Just move really quickly. Don't try and get close. Okay. It's right up there. 
Move quickly, move quickly. It's, no, it's on the trail. <laughs> it was a rattlesnake. It was in the bushes for them and then I tried to start walking and it crossed the trail right as I was about to wow. pass it. So let's walk past this area quickly. All right. It's here. I don't know if this is overkill, maybe it is. <laughs> Sarah's getting the royal treatment. Despite the scare with the rattlesnake, it was hard not to feel at peace surrounded by this vibrant, sun-soaked landscape. As we hiked, we saw some morning glories popping out from the grass, and the view of the ocean below was stunning. high point, the trail started descending into a flat open expanse, the Spanish Flats. Yo, not only is this fantastic as far as visually, this ground is perfectly flat and solid. <laughs> this is such a nice change of pace. You can classify this trail in multiple parts. There's like hell, purgatory, heaven. <laughs> <laughs> it is hard to like put into words just how blissful this feels right now. We continued hiking through the open meadows. Birds soared above the bald, grassy hills. Eventually, we came across a campsite adjacent to the trail. Yo, this is a nice campsite! I feel like we can only go up from our campsite yesterday. And Andrew saw some interesting shrubs. So it's funny because as we're walking, we're keeping an eye out for rattlesnakes. We, but uh, every time we brush against these pea plants, these have this like rattle sound. So it's always like instilling paranoia because <laughs> there's all these dry seeds in the pea pods that are shaking. Uh, and then these brilliant purple flowers. Each flower has four petals, which means it's in the mustard family. And actually this is called wild radish. Like all mustard plants, these flowers are completely edible. The trail again descended into another vast open section. With the sunlight shining brightly, the colors of the grass and the wildflowers contrasted with the vibrant blue ocean and the breeze in the air. It really felt like we were in paradise. Amid the grass, we saw a flowering succulent, and Andrew saw some other plants growing in the gully ahead. So over in this valley, there's a creek, and there's a plant growing in that kind of looks like reeds. This is called horsetail. Earlier we saw it near our campsite and it was like really bristly and fluffy. If you look here, there's actually some that have these longer, fluffier parts coming out and then others are just like growing without that. You always see these around water because they love water, but I feel like these are really prehistoric looking plants. Like it looks like something out of the age of dinosaurs. Now are those at all related to bamboo? Uh, no, but at Ikea, they have a picture of these and the caption says bamboo furniture. <laughs> we now approached Camp Wolfman, which was situated by the ocean. Nearby, we saw a crow relaxing on an old log, and we were ready to relax ourselves. Oh, how I would love to just stop. <laughs> Man. How's your hunger levels? Hunger levels are fine. Just my... How's my, your motivation uh, levels? <laughs> motivation levels are dropping. I'm starting to feel the fatigue now, mm. after waking up that early. I think the trail is almost too easy. When the trail's too easy, it just feels like, I should just stop. <laughs> it's like when you're driving on a very straight road and you just start mm. feeling tired because there's mm -hmm. nothing to pay attention to. We hiked on, passing by a junction with another trail leading up one of the hilly ridges. Soon, we approached an area that was even flatter and more expansive. We 
hiked lazily along the trail. To our left, some of the hills were covered in dense woods. Look at this intensely dark green sprawl of pines. I know we say this a lot, but it makes me think of a video game. <laughs> and there was a reason for all the dense vegetation. As we hiked ahead, the trail led us to Spanish Creek, just as we were running out of water. The path wound through patches of shrubs. We passed by a few hikers who were camping in the shade of the bushes. Then we came to the creek itself, which was surrounded by deciduous trees. Here, we filled up on water and took a break. After our quick break, we hoisted our bags onto our shoulders once again and headed out. From here, it was about a 1.4 mile hike to the next campsite at Kinsey Creek. As we hiked on, we passed by another section of private property. There's a little sign on the ground here that points this way, indicating that it's a private road. And further down the way, we see a little house. So I think that's one of the holdouts of private property. What would you do with this? I don't know. <laughs> like, the amount of effort it would take to get out here. Yeah. It would certainly be nice to have a vacation home out here, but we were glad most of the land was available to the public to enjoy. In the distance, we saw the private house at the base of the hills. Now, the trail turned back onto the beach. We weren't too eager to hike on the sand again, so we took another short break. Then, we continued on. Thankfully, there was another solid dirt path we could walk on, though Thomas and Sierra stayed on the beach to avoid ticks. The scenery around us was absolutely stunning. Dark green foliage covered distant hills, which seemed to melt into the brilliant blue ocean. Clumps of California poppies added an extra burst of color to the meadows. Up ahead, we came to another wooded stream, Oat Creek. Oh, time for another prolonged break. <laughs> I'm down. <laughs> we crossed the stream taking in the drastically different biome that surrounded it before emerging back onto the open grasslands. Here, we saw even more yellow California poppies and magenta-colored farewell to spring flowers scattered among the grass. The trail then crested another hill, revealing the vast ocean. In the ocean, we saw some pelicans floating on the water and another cormorant roosting on a rock. Thomas had hiked ahead on the beach, where a large metal cylinder had been left rusting on the sand. We hiked through the grasslands to catch up with Thomas. As we hiked, we saw another rusted cylinder lying in the grass. I have two thoughts on what that rusty bucket could be. It looks vaguely nautical to me, but I also wonder if it's like a, an old septic tank or something. I was thinking nautical too, just because it's got those rivets. Yeah, yeah. And like, that's a very boat thing. But <laughs> I'm the last person <laughs> you should ever consult on anything nautical. <laughs> okay, up ahead, we can see Brian, he's just about to reach Kinsey Creek. We can see a tent already at the campsite. So the question is, do we stay at Kinsey or do we hike 1.6 miles after that to the next campsite? I don't know yet. I guess we'll have to see how we feel when we get there. I think it's early enough in the day that if we rested a while at Kinsey, we could make to the next, but I am also very tired. <laughs> <laughs> we spotted a deer frolicking in the grass. As we hiked further up, we realized we hadn't seen a tent in the distance, but something else altogether. What's going on here? I wasn't sure if you guys got lost, so I decided I'd use my body as a beacon. And reflect light like the lighthouse should. Now, it was time to decide where we would be camping. <clears throat> okay, I have made my decision. I would like to stay at Kinsey Creek. What do you guys feel? How far Big Creek? 1.6? 1.6. It is currently 246. 
You already know what I'm going to say, so I'm not going to say it. <laughs> For those of you first-time viewers, he's saying we should keep going. Depending on how this rest goes, I could keep going. Because it's so early in the day, but my legs are ready to stop moving. I do feel <clears throat> capable of going to Big Creek. Part of me thinks Big Creek does make sense, but I don't see why you can't just take some time here and let it see what the fates decide. So we're thinking Big Creek is totally doable after a nice rest. It's only 1.6 more miles, but I have a feeling that a lot of people are going to be there. The one we're at might not be crowded, so we're going to have Thomas check. If this one's not crowded, I feel like we should do the bird in the hand instead of the stone in the bush. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so yeah, we sent Thomas to go check Kinsey Creek, but the truth is, is we just wanted to take his chair. Uh, I'm just gonna lie in this sand, <laughs> this tick infested sand. <laughs> oh, <man. laughs> The sun has baked all brain cells <laughs> out, of, oh, out of our minds. <laughs> Honestly, the longer we take a break here, the more likely it is we are staying. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> like, taking a break is not going to energize us. <laughs> it's going to be like, yeah, just go ahead and stop. <laughs> so Kinsey does look nice and has beach access, I think. Mm. How many people? I only see one tent right now. Tom this is a done deal. Thomas is going to come back and lie and be like, it's so crowded, guys. <laughs> and then when we're passing by, he's going to be like, hey, what's that over there in the ocean? <laughs> like, look, look, keep, keep walking, but keep looking. <laughs> oh, man, I'm a dusty boy now. <laughs> I didn't trust Thomas to give me an accurate reading of the campsite, so I quickly walked over to check it out myself and then came back. What'd you find? There's one that's right next to the creek that'll only fit one tent. I just saw you running up. Did you see others down you there? see that one right there in between the gaps in the trees? That one is excellent. But, um... I headed back to the others, while Robbie went on to the potential campsite. The site had a nice shady spot and fire pit. A perfect place to stay if there were no other options. We caught up with Robbie and inspected the campsite. Man, this looks pretty damn good. Now, it was time to sit in the shade and debate whether to stay here or keep hiking to the next campsite. The difference really is between 1.6 miles today or in the morning. If I knew it was guaranteed we could get a campsite like this at Big Creek, I'd say let's do Big Creek, but... Personally, I don't see any reason to go to Big Creek. If we are not guaranteed a campsite, that extra 1.6 miles is not going to make any difference. As long as you don't think it'll make a difference for the tide zone. Because today we started at the tide zone pretty much. Yeah. But tomorrow we have a lot to hike to get to that. Yeah. I will go to Big <laughs> Creek if I can hear a strong argument for it. I don't hear a strong argument for it. Okay, so I think we've decided that we're gonna stay here. It would basically mean hiking an extra 1.6 miles on Sunday. And since Sunday shouldn't be a problem regardless, we can always get up earlier if we need to and we don't wanna get back to the town too late. So, we're doing it. Now that we had decided to stay here, we started pitching our tents and setting up camp. It felt great to be able to dry out our feet and rest with plenty of time to kill. We set up in the shade to escape the sun and relaxed while we prepared our dehydrated meal. Chicken. Home style chicken and rice. I think that's what I have. Is that like the circular carrots? Mm -hmm. uh -huh. And the rice and the chicken? I think I actually have these. Oh, really good. I got some good taste. Well, it's got a lot more flavor than I thought it did. No. The carrots actually are pretty good. Yeah. What'd you get, Brian? Fettuccine? Yeah. How's it? I've been wanting to eat this since you had it in Big Ben. Mmm. That was good. With dinner done, we milled about the rest of the evening as the sun slowly set. On a wilderness journey like this, the importance of preparation in the face of anything you might encounter becomes especially clear. Whether looking at the rocks beaten by crashing waves or the hills scorched by wildfires, it becomes apparent that even a paradise like this can pose challenges to hikers. Just as in life, you never know what turn of events will happen or where fate will lead you. Oftentimes, we turn to material things or external validation to carry us through life. 
But it's important to be able to depend on yourself when the going gets hard, to develop the kind of love for and confidence in oneself that allows you to navigate life without a dependency on other things. Part of getting to this point requires a lot of introspection and honest self-reflection. That's in part why we love hiking through the wilderness so much. It provides the perfect backdrop for soul searching. The rougher moments of hikes can teach us about ourselves, and the quiet solitude enables us to truthfully listen to our own thoughts. And at the end of the day, when you searched and hiked for hours, you can lie down and drift off into a relaxing sleep. Look of sheer disgust. <laughs> it was another far too early morning the next day. We tiredly rose out of our tents and talked about the blustery night we had had. It got super windy. Like even with us in there, I could feel the tent moving. Yeah. So. You guys are very lucky that you staked your tent down because I didn't stake mine down, and then the rain fly came undone. Oh, and no. I was flipping and flopping like crazy. <laughs> I thought I heard yours making a lot of noise. <laughs> so much noise. Like the, both doors were. <laughs> yeah, I feel like I woke up a lot more this time around, which in a way was kind of nice because it made the night feel longer. <laughs> but I still don't feel that rested. <laughs> I don't at all. I went to bed at 7 o'clock. <laughs> but as tired as we were, Sierra was fully awake and ready to get moving. Gosh, so good. Sierra, not right now. Once again, we set out before the break of dawn, hiking out in the brisk, early morning air. The trail led us onto a section of flat, open grasslands. The moon hovered in the pastel-colored sky above, and in the distance, the hills were obscured by a hazy blue mist. We passed by some other campers, in a hillside that had been scorched by a wildfire. A bit further ahead, we also saw another house on a small plot of private land. But our gaze was fixed on the misty horizon. Eventually, the trail led us back onto the beach. While we were hiking, I spotted some interesting tracks that had been left in the sand. Some sort of paw print here doesn't, obviously not a dog, unless it's a really, really big dog. <laughs> small bear, maybe. It's gotta be, right? Whoa, holy crap. <laughs> I'm not the best at gauging how old tracks are. These look somewhat fresh, but some of the tracks have been washed away over here. So it was before the water came this high. And then these tracks have some debris that has landed in them. If that debris was like squished down, that means that the tracks are fresher. But since they've blown into them, that means they're a little bit older. They were definitely here within the last 12 hours. Yeah, yeah. I would say so, something like that. Probably like right before the tide rose up. Yeah. On top of everything else we had seen, it was incredible to have found fresh bear tracks in the sand. So we're not yet in the final impassable zone, but just looking at the watermark, I don't know how you would get through this area if it wasn't low tide. Maybe you could get up on the land, but the water clearly looks like it's all the way up to the edge. Thankfully, the tide was low, but the landscape itself looked foreboding, especially in the umbral lighting of dawn. As we hiked along the coast, we spotted a starfish the remnants of a bone, and a crab shell. Further along the beach, we again saw more bear tracks. We also came across the remains of a translucent jellyfish. So this is Big Creek Camp. This is where we would have went last night. We got here in about an hour or so, I think. Yeah.
Then we came across another creek. We could see the first glimpses of sunlight peeking through the valley as we figured out a way across the creek. After crossing the stream, we continued along the foggy beach. The hazy mist diffused the dim morning light, and all of the wet stones on the beach had a subdued sheen to them that added to the surreal feeling of the landscape. Eventually, the path led us off the beach. The trail goes much farther inland. We can probably hug the coast, but just in case, we'll get back on the main trail. Now, we hiked up grassy hills. Ahead of us, we could see a sun-soaked spot far in the distance. The trail led into a more wooded area, where Andrew smelled some interesting flowers. So this is a flower called Blue Blossom. Uh, I don't know too much about it, but it's super fragrant. Here, give it a whiff. <laughs> mm. It smells like uh, that old zebra bubble gum. Yeah, it is really fragrant. Very floral. Then, as we made our way through the shrubs, we reached the crest of a hill where we scouted out the path ahead. The trail now wound downhill, past some sheer cliffs right next to the beach, and entered another flat, open section. As we gazed out into the ocean, we could see more and more sunlight illuminating the landscape around us. We hiked up another grassy hillside. When we reached the top of the hill, we were amazed at the view that greeted us. At this moment, we were sure that if there was a heaven, we had found a part of it that had fallen to earth. As we made our way across the idyllic meadow, we saw some deer browsing in the grass. In the same way that a rougher journey can teach you about yourself, sublime moments like this can give us a newfound appreciation of life. A new perspective that helps us prioritize what's important in our lives, and new motivation to improve yourself. That's the irony of discovering yourself out in nature. When turning inward and focusing on who we are as an individual, we are still inevitably influenced by the environment around us. We made our way across a wide dirt road. As we hiked, the morning mist was slowly dissipating away under the bright sun. Before long, we approached another holdout of private land. Somebody has a house up here. And of all the houses that we've seen so far, I feel like this is a spot where I can really understand it. Yeah. I'm like, okay, I can understand the effort to get out here to live in a place like this. Is this one of the most beautiful places we've ever seen? <laughs> I think so. <laughs> we were just talking about how it's easy to see how different myths and beliefs were formed if most of the world looked like this and you were traveling around, but then we yeah, came across this shrine. <laughs> a crop circle. What's well, a maze? <laughs> Do I have to walk over? Yeah, there's some like seashells and stuff. This is the point in the video game where I would give you like a bam. bam. <laughs> yeah, that is cool. <laughs> I could easily see that being some sort of like path to trick monsters and demons. <laughs> like they go through it and then they get stuck there, you know? Yeah, yeah. Now we approach the front of the house, which had a nice sitting area set up for passersby, complete with some fascinating artifacts. It's a whale bone. Whoa. That is huge. It's nice that the owner has like a little oasis here for hikers. Yeah. <laughs> now, we continued on. The trail turned towards the coast again. As we made our way over, we saw herds of deer roaming around.
decided to take a brief rest on a large fallen log before continuing on. The misty hills in the distance never ceased to look amazing as we hiked. To our left, a couple of crows were perched on some dead standing trees. We now passed through a shrubby part of the meadow before finding our way briefly back on the sand. Here, we saw another creek, which we each found our own way across. How did you get across? Uh, there were a few rocks and then uh, one of my feet went underwater. <laughs> The path now led us from the sand back onto more solid ground. Here and there, we saw more rusty wreckage on the ground. And to our left, we saw another herd of deer, including two bucks, grazing beneath a Jolly Roger flag. Before long, we had reached the end of the flats. We had hiked nearly five miles, but we still had a good bit left to hike. Okay, looks like we're about to start the impassable zone. We have three and a half hours to get through it, if we make it all the way through. The trail led us to a steep, rocky descent back onto the beach. Now back on sand, our footing wasn't quite as solid as before, but the views remain just as stunning as ever. Hiking on the rocky beach, we couldn't help but notice the sheer bluffs to our left and thinking about what this would be like at a different time of day. So I guess at high tide, this is completely submerged. This would definitely not be a place you'd want to get caught in. Like you would just be smashed up against these rocks. Yeah. It's amazing how much lower the tide goes. It is way out there. It comes all the way up to here. But you can tell that it comes up here, especially because look how jagged these rocks are. But at the bottom, they're all worn down by the ocean. Oh, yep. In a nearby tide pool, we also saw some brightly colored starfish clinging to algae-covered rocks. Occasionally, we passed by trickles of fresh water surrounded by drooping clumps of grass. We had hiked a couple of miles into the impassable zone now, and near the next campsite at Butt Creek, situated within the impassable zone on some high ground. We had wanted to make it all the way through the impassable zone, but we were running out of time, and we were all exhausted after a long day's hike. We noticed other hikers had stopped to stay here as well. There's actually someone here. Huh. Surprising. Woo! Oh, yeah. Whew. I think we should just stay here. What? Yeah. It gained us an extra 1.6 miles, which we can knock out in 45 minutes. Yeah. And we've been hiking I for like water. five straight hours. I need to eat. I need a break. Well, we're not doing anything else for the rest of the day. No. We know that. Yeah. Yep. There's people up there. We've got a second chance at uh, around three or four o'clock. There's another receding tide we could do then. Oh, cool. So we're hiking on rocks after this, it looks like. To gain just 1.6 miles is... I'm not gonna argue with you guys. Yep. Good. <laughs> after convincing Thomas, we made our way up a small trail and found a nice campsite. All right, so we're gonna tent right here. There's a lot of people camping here already, but there's a nice shady spot where we think we're gonna go relax and eat. We made our way down some thick vegetation into a shady grove to escape the sun and have a snack. Wow, I have not been this worn out and hungry in a long time. Mm. It wasn't strenuous in terms of like uphill cardio stuff, but just constant wear and tear on your legs. There's something that's like weirdly masochistically enjoyable about like <laughs> starving and being worn out. <laughs> As long as you know you have a place like this to come to afterwards. Hiking on rocks and sand are two very difficult things. And it's like you get one after the other. Yeah. How's everyone feeling? Very good. Uh, I'm sitting and eating food. Yeah. We will snack this thing. That's Brian's, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Would you like some of Brian's snacks? Would you like some of your own snacks? <laughs> yeah, I just think like we would have probably had to take some sort of a break here. Refill on water. I definitely need water. <clears throat> I don't think we could have kept going and felt no. too good about it. It would have been pretty close. <laughs> yeah. It's 1.72 feet right now. All right, me and Thomas have both saved coffee for the perfect moment. It's the steeped kind from uh, Joan. Thank you, Joan, once again. 
Oh man, it smells so good. Oh my God, come on. Yo guys, we've been transported to grandma's house on Christmas morning. Oh God, I burned my nostrils. <laughs> Brown too. Coffee is such a mood booster, man. Happy yet, Thomas? <laughs> Thomas is like, I'm not gonna be happy until we get to the car. I'm not gonna be happy until I get to my car <laughs> and Sierra and I are the only ones left <laughs> in it. A toll that two extra weeks of <laughs> traveling. Road tripping. Yeah. Yeah. Nah, I'm fine. The problem is I just like purposely under eating on this trip, which makes me very hangry. Nearby, I saw some oyster mushrooms growing, but not enough to satiate our hanger. Then, we all did a quick tick check since we had hiked through so much tall grass. Okay, the tide is now at 3.06 feet. I'm very curious what it looks like now that it's past what is typically thought of as hikeable. You know, it would definitely be hikeable at three feet, but that would be a little nerve wracking. You'd really want to hug the coastline and the water encroaching on you would be very disconcerting. You'd basically be up against the edge, huh? Not to mention it'd be intimidating as hell. Yeah, like you can't see any sand anymore. It's all just rocks now. Yeah. You could do it in a pinch, but you would not want to do that. After inspecting the coast, we filled up on some water from the nearby stream. Then we milled about for the rest of the day enjoying the time we had to waste. We killed a little time by playing heads up. When the shade got too chilly, we made our way back up into the sun to check on our drying socks. Then Brian and I decided to cook our dehydrated meals. We could no longer deal with the hanger as was evidenced by our conversation. The incredulity that Thomas expressed when we said we're gonna stay at this campsite <laughs> was unbelievable. I think we should just stay here. What? It's like you're telling me we have to stop if hiking Thomas... through these rough rocks <laughs> and we have to relax by we're the beach. Under the... Anyways, the reason we're bringing this up is because we're all so hungry. <laughs> Thomas's bear box is filled entirely Let me, with hold on, let me. We're pretty low on snacks, right? We still have five miles to hike tomorrow. Yeah. I don't think any of us are getting the necessary calories that we need right now, even with these meals. But Sierra, I think has eaten two bags of food so far. One, two, three, four, five, and a little dental snack here. Yeah. It could have been trail mix. <laughs> we gotta try this. No. I, You're gonna I, try one? I'm not even close to hungry enough yet. I don't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> Ugh. What's you guys' final meal? That was that right. As the water boiled, we prepared our sleeping quarters. How is it in here? When the breeze blows, it's really nice. No different than being out in the actual sun. <laughs> With the water heated, Robbie prepared his meal, and I got some much needed suntan. Several more minutes passed by, and it was time for Robbie to enjoy his dinner. Okay, I got the boar bacon stew. Let me smell that. Oh, I'll, I'll let you lick the bowl. It's a <laughs> There's that knee slap. My friends, tomorrow will be a good day. <laughs> I wonder if I mix that kibble with enough wild forageable vegetables, it would become palatable. <laughs> Use the leftover spices from the pouch. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna say, I was gonna be like, Andrew, you wanna smell this? But then I was like, mm, that's a little cruel. <laughs> and then he was like, well, let me do that for you. <laughs> Anyways, I got the green curry. Let me smell that again. <laughs> so Brian had a really good idea. We split this meal in half, and then later we split the lasagna in half. So that way, we're kind of having two meals. Oh man, it's so good. I gotta make sure I eat slowly. <laughs> Savor the flavor. <laughs> so if you're ever out hiking and you either end up in a survival situation or one of your hiking buddies packs five bags of dog food uh, and you're really hungry, there's a couple plants you can eat out here. Growing all along this fire pit are sheep sorrels, and there's some nice plump juicy ones, but if you eat those, as many of you know already, it has a nice tart, apple-y taste. And then all of these yellow flowers growing in this area, I don't know exactly the species, but it's a plant in the mustard family. There's only four petals on each flower, and the stem has these little seed pods kind of coming off of them. Mildly bitter, but kind of cruciferous tasting. After that, we returned to our shady grove to pass more time, but our hunger was all we could think about. 
in our famished state, we started sharing pictures of food we had taken on our phones with each other. I, I figured out how to do a TikTok of food. It's just endless scrolling. <laughs> <laughs> look at this food we had on the first day in New York, congee. <laughs> look at this charcuterie you made. Oh, look at this brunch I cooked. Oh, that was our legendary Pictured Rocks pizza. Oh, Here's these, here are these hot dogs that you're talking about. That I would make. I told you oh. I like to make Oh, so you do like the Chicago style. Oh, I love Chicago yeah. style. The tide was now rising even higher, so I again wandered down to the shore to see how high the water levels were. So the tide is currently at 4.8 feet. I feel like the three feet recommendation they give is a pretty good margin for safety because you could probably walk at the current tide level, but it would be really scary and you would probably get wet. And it's gonna get higher too, actually. Uh, later tonight, it'll probably get up to six point something feet. We definitely made the right decision to stay at this campground instead of the other one. And honestly, more than anything, it was really nice to just have a relaxing afternoon for once. Now, Thomas and Andrew cooked their meals. It's rare that we have this much time to kill at a campsite. Yeah. No skin. Minus the no food part. Yeah. <laughs> Although, if we did have food, we'd just be eating so much out of boredom and entertainment. <laughs> we'd have no food tomorrow either way. If you think about it, you don't need to eat anything tomorrow. You can get all the way back to the trailhead. Yeah. Over. Yeah. Well, you have two granola bars, you have two granola bars? Yeah. One each. <laughs> Still got that kibble. Eat that kibble. I mean, you want cinnamon or cliff bar? <laughs> Man, this lasagna is so good. Is it going to satisfy or is it going to just make you wish that you had more? A little bit of both. I gotta make sure I chew slowly so I savor it. <laughs> we relaxed for the rest of the day after dinner. As evening fell, the sun's light grew warmer in color, sparkling on the ocean's surface. Around 7 p.m., we started heading to bed to sleep. We had one last early morning before hiking the rest of the Lost Coast Trail. This is the third night out here. It's hard to believe. I know. It really has flown by. This has been an amazing, amazing trail, but it's also been some rough terrain. At first, I was expecting a pretty chill beach hike. It just feels like this trip has had a lot of little difficulties. Yeah. Hiking in the sand is really tough. <laughs> Hiking on rocks is really tough. Mm -hmm. Trying to find decent campsites, dealing with the sun, dealing with the tides, dealing with wildlife. The highest highs and the lowest lows. <laughs> yeah, like you really work for the views out here. Yeah. It's been nice today to just kind of take a day and really relax. This is the perfect time for the trip to end. Like when we hike out tomorrow, I think all of us are gonna be ready to, to get back to normalcy. <laughs> yeah. another mystical early morning when we woke up the next day. We let ourselves take some time packing away our gear. After we packed away most of our things, we talked about how the night went. Yeah, I actually feel like I slept the best this night. I woke up like right before 5.30 and I was like, God, I hope it's not 5.30 yet. <laughs> <laughs> Although I will say when I was falling asleep, all I could think about was food. I was like, huh, I should cook this when I get home. I should cook that. <laughs> we grabbed our packs and headed back out to the stony beach. We hiked along the quiet, peaceful beach, watching the waves churning over the rocky coast. The tide 
is currently at 1.68 feet. It is going to be receding for the next two hours and it'll get as low as negative 0.81 feet. So I think we're good to walk on the sand. It's not too bad. It doesn't look intimidating like it did yesterday afternoon. Just a straight shot all the way to Shelter Cove to our car. As we walked, we talked about the campsite we had stayed at. So one of the reasons we decided to stay at Buck Creek Campsite was because we thought everybody who had hiked past us would have gotten through the impassable zone and would have been a glitch hole or even done. So we were very surprised to find that Buck Creek was actually pretty crowded. <laughs> it ended up being pretty good, but it was just really surprising. <laughs> what was doubly surprising is that somebody arrived like at seven o'clock. And we we're like, what are I you doing that. here? <laughs> Ahead, Brian spotted some animal tracks. Looks like we got some tracks here. Not bear tracks, obviously, but you can actually compare it to Sierra's tracks. Oh, some coyote. sort of, like fox maybe or something. Coyote or something. Yeah. From this point on, the beach seemed to flatten out. Much of the sand was compressed and solid to walk on. We watched the foamy ocean water rolling in and out, and cherish these last five miles of our hike. The Lost Coast had truly been an incredible journey. No matter where you end up going, escaping to nature can always be a therapeutic experience. Smaller jaunts into the wilderness can provide a much needed escape. But bigger trips like this can act as a personal milestone or a catalyst for a greater personal challenge in life. The universe is in constant flux. Life can sometimes make us feel like a cork floating in the ocean, desperately trying to control things. One of the few things we do have some control over is how we grow as a person. As we made our way out, we arrived at Gitchell Creek, the last campsite on the trail and the end of the final impassable zone. We took a break here to enjoy the scenery and to reflect on the journey so far. I know for like a long time, Brian, you've been saying you want to just hike on a coast and just keep going. Yeah. So is this, did this meet your expectations? I think this is about as close as it's gonna get. Yeah, this is kind of one of those trails that you don't realize could actually exist in real life. The fact that you're just along the ocean the entire time is so incredible. Before we came here, I was reading about the trail and people called this a bucket list hike. While we were driving in, I was kind of worried. I was like, is this actually gonna be worth it? The <laughs> amount of effort and time that we put in to actually get here, totally worth it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And getting up at, you know, 5.30 in the morning to hike. It sounds terrible, but once you're used to it, it's like the best time to hike. Mm, that's it's true, yeah. amazing, like the weather is perfect and you just... And the scenery right now with the morning mist, like mm. it's been so awesome to see that every morning. Um, and thank you to Catherine. Yeah. We wouldn't actually be here. We wouldn't even have thought about coming here. Yeah. For her, so. yeah, yeah. Thank you. Anyway, as much as this has been great, I'm also looking forward to still sitting by the ocean, but maybe with some dry shoes and some food and maybe a cold beer or something. <laughs> Indeed. Good times. I'm down. All right. All right. Sierra, are you ready? That's a yes. Let's go. Hiking through a landscape so vastly different from everyday life, a place so profoundly beautiful, but also challenging to experience, will teach you a lot about yourself. When you face difficulty in life, Sometimes it's best to turn inward and focus on yourself. That doesn't mean trying to become better than others or controlling what other people do or how they act. Focusing on yourself doesn't mean ignoring the world around you. Developing yourself often goes hand in hand with learning to treat the world around you with kindness and openness. When you experience a setback or a disappointment in life, we can use these experiences to learn things about ourselves, to look inside and to think about how we can grow. 
All of the knowledge we gain from life is ultimately self-knowledge, which we can use to improve ourselves, our lives, and the communities around us. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoy our videos, please consider joining our Patreon community at patreon.com slash adventure. Patrons get early access to the videos, special live streams, commentaries, and bloopers. And patrons at the hiker tier can even get their names in the credits. If you enjoyed the music we wrote for the episode, you can find all of it at adventurearchives.bandcamp.com. Finally, we have t-shirts for sale, which you can find at bit.ly slash adventure shirts. Thank you very much for watching, and we'll see you in the next one. Whoa! It's a whole scene right. Yeah. We are so close. We can see the parking lot. And yet we're still so far. a lovely arrangement. <laughs> <laughs> that furikake snack mix was awesome. <laughs> I just had to get that on the record. <laughs> you uh, struggling there? Yes. All right. Enjoy the wait. We'll be back in two hours. <laughs> Maybe three. <laughs> Sounds like fun. <laughs> well, actually, it is going to be a solid three hours, so prepare yourself right now. Wow, that is crazy. I'm not looking forward to this. <laughs> I'm just gonna exist for the next three hours. It's like we uh, get to camp a whole nother night. <laughs> just you and me, Thomas. As it was always never meant to be. <laughs> Never say never, but I think this is probably the last time we'll ever see this place again. <laughs> Soak it in! <laughs> so we have to drive to them, which will probably take another like an hour and a half, and then where are we going from there? Four hours down to Oakland. Cool. All right. Okay, it takes three hours to go from Indianapolis to Columbus. We have now driven halfway to Indianapolis to Columbus. We will now do the other half. Goodbye, Lost Coast. the drive <laughs> <laughs> it was so long we just kept turning and turning and turning and turning <laughs> food next yep food next yes okay. and we're off he broke the blazing saddle who oh, there is a shirtless man We are at the peg house. Are you ready to get full? I am ready. <laughs> I'm ready to get so full. <laughs> All right, 
peg house. Are you guys ready to get pegged? <laughs> We gotta eat the dessert first, I think. Yeah. They're gonna think that we just send Thomas away, but he just does this to himself. <laughs> <laughs> I keep hearing other people's name, order names, and I'm mm. just like, what if Robbie just put the name in, put the order in under someone else's name? Like when he called Sarah, I was like, oh, what if we put the order in under Sierra? <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh, that's our order. <laughs> good. Oh, good, man. Yeah. So simple, yet so delicious. That's just like lingonberries or something. It's blackberries. <laughs> <laughs> This is like, environment, atmosphere-wise, one of the best places we've had a post tech meal. This is fantastic. I'm glad all three of us are here to enjoy it. <laughs> Thomas can't wait to leave our presence. <laughs> Drunk are you? Are you a happy drunk? I feel like you're the same when you're drunk. <laughs> I'm a happy drunk. <laughs> Potato salad. I don't know. I have or banana pepper. It's macaroni. It's macaroni. Or a macaroni salad. Why a politician wants to vote? Big foot burger. Oh man. Oh, I'm good. I got the Bigfoot burger too. Oh, yeah. I got the Mediterranean chicken sandwich. Very good. Good music. Good food. Come on, man. This is what I live for. This is top five best post site meal. <laughs> Easily. Yeah. How's that potato salad? It's good. We got bumper stickers. <laughs> heading out? I think I'm heading out here. All right. You have a good trip? I had a great trip. How about you? I had a good trip. Probably got enough from Robbie. You don't want to see him again. <laughs> I think I'll see you in September, actually. September? Yes. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. All right. See you, see man. You have a safe drive back. Driving away when we got it, when I came out here. So he was like, all right, I'm done waiting. All right, <laughs> What'd you get Thomas. for him, which is for us? I got a brownie, it was for everybody, but oh, okay. I guess it's just for it's us. Just for <laughs> <laughs> mm. I'll take it. Mm. More sugar than any human would ever need. <laughs> 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 My name is Douglas Jackson. I work the late nights as a bouncer at a nightclub, which means I usually sleep from morning to the afternoon. But these days, I haven't been getting any sleep during the daytime. I've been lifting weights recently. I hate lifting. It only really makes sense to do if you're depressed or you've been dumped. My first date with Mary's and Cabbage was on April Fool's Day. I was always a little suspicious about how things would turn out because of that. But before long, we were pretty serious. We went on a small road trip together on our third date. After that, on every Friday, I waited for her at this bus stop, the San Juan One bus stop. When she got off work, we would walk home together. Old habits die hard, I guess. But I don't think she's gonna show up today. One month ago, she got on a plane to fly out to Oregon and got engaged to a man named Charlie Joe. How should I get over her? My fitness coach says the only way to get over a girl is to find another. Maybe I'll try that. Hey, Sarah. It's Douglas. 
Want to go out for a drink? You're in bed already? This early? Alright. Never mind. Have a good night. Hello? Is this Shruti? Guess who? Yeah, that's right. Uh, listen, do you wanna go out for a drink tonight? Jasper Craparota? You're married? When did that happen? You met at Expedition Research LLC. Got it, got it. No, you're happy. That's, that's great. That's great. Alright. Talk to you sometime. Bye. Niao. Ye Jun Zai Putai. Washer Ling Wai To. Nichita Woma. Ni Bujita. Hao, make sure. Say again. Hi, is this Annie? It's John Truitt. Alright, I must have the wrong number. Sorry. Bye. Love is a bit like lifting weights. Sometimes the burden's just more than it's worth, and you need to take a day or two to rest. Brian and Asayama Gata want to give a shout out to all the conservationists out there fighting to keep our Earth as healthy and beautiful as possible. We couldn't agree more. Salvador Gonzalez, they're on the last curve. Your brother's behind. Nah, -uh, Jay Ramundo. There's no way my brother would lose. Come on, Dan. I'm going for it. Dan, what are you doing? I've never seen this before. Huh? He's actually doing it. It's like Sue and Tawn all over again. You're drifting way too hard. No. I gotta do it! Ah! Dan, no, you crazy! Ah! He's going into overdrift. Ah! Ah! Brother! As always, want to give a big thank you to Tim S. Tim S. wants to give a shout out to his wonderful wife, Nikki, and his amazing son, Liam. Also, Tim S. wants to give a thank you, and we want to give a thank you, to uh, Jacob Peterson of Beach and Tactical and Exodus Knife and Tool, as well as Kevin T. Johnson of Midwest Woodcraft. With the generosity of Tim S., he reached out to these two uh, craftspeople, and we're excited to share some of the tools and um, toys that uh, Tim S. has sent us. So thank you so much, Tim S., and thank you so much to uh, those folks as well. Hey, it's Robbie. Welcome back to the vlog. I've got some people to thank. First up, James Rakitsky. But actually, first up, I'm gonna eat something. All right, let's see what we got here. You know what? I actually want to thank William Garnett too. But have you ever thought about stuff and how it affects your life? Man, stuff. I know it's been a few days since the last vlog, but that's because I've been so busy editing the latest episode. But first, I also want to give thanks to John Scott and Elaine R. Anthony. Now, let's get back to editing that episode. All right, so lately, there's this show I've been watching, and it clicks all of my buttons. You guys have to watch it. Found it on YouTube. It's called Adventure Archives. I don't know what it is about it, but something about it just, it vibes with me. But you know what else? I've got to give a shout out to Gavin Ryan and Akuya Giasari. Thank you so much. Editing is done for today, but now I'm gonna go for a run. Woo! That was a good run, but it's really hot and it's really humid. It's time to eat again. The last person we gotta give a shout out to is Jason Bourgeois. He just wants to give a happy birthday to Carrie with love from your favorite West Coast Eagles fan. Love, Jason. Isn't that right? Anyways, that's gonna do it for today's vlog. Thank you so much for tuning in this time and I will see you tomorrow. I want to give a big thanks to Richard Frangiamori as well, uh, who wants to give a shout out to Adam and Ben from the Greatest Generation podcast. It's a cool Star Trek podcast, so make sure you check it out. And um, uh, Friends of DeSoto, 
who are still dropping bangers six years in. Thank you so much, Richard. Lou and Leon Lynn want to give a special shout out to Tom and Sue Kozlowski. Lou and Leon say it was great finally meeting you, Sue and Tom, and hoping to see you more in the future. Also, Sue and Tom, thank you so much for everything that you do. You're wonderful people. Brian and Cody Strom would like to give a shout out to Brian, Thomas, Robbie, and Andrew, especially for the music that we write for the episodes. Thank you very much. Huh? Master Chief Madeline Holly, good to see you. What's your name? Christina Alvarez, ma'am. Alvarez, what's the situation? There's an elite somewhere inside. David and Jennifer Dickerson already went inside looking for Sun Jan Huang. I haven't heard from any of them since. I'm gonna need your weapon and your helmet. Take my weapon. You'll need it. Head back to base. Report to GreatLinksWaterCraft.com. I'll take care of this. Master Chief! Are you two David and Jennifer Dickerson? I'm Oni Spec Ops Morgan Ariel Weinrich, and this is Spec Ops Taylor Pearson. Ma'am, what are you gonna do? Finish this fight. Mine! 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 <laughs> <laughs>